Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being with me. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty, actually a lot of bit of a technical difficulty going live this evening. That's why we are. That's why we were a few minutes late and we are not live on Facebook. So I tried to post links for you to come and find us here on YouTube. So I hope you have all made it over here because of course we have a great big show for you tonight. Um, so I would like to welcome you. Normally I say whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, but you are all on YouTube watching me. So I hope you're all there have found us. Now that you are here, make sure to subscribe. It seems to be a more stable platform than Facebook. So maybe this would be a great place to find me all the time. Now, <laughs> make sure you use the thumbs up. No thumbs up, huh? <laughs> no hearts on YouTube, but just make sure you keep commenting and, and telling us that you like what you're seeing. Uh, we love that because today is a big day, a big show. I will be introducing you to my 22nd book, Stripology Mixology 2. Yay! We will be seeing a preview of the book and then we will take a closer look at four of the quilts in the book. Um, out of 13. So we're also continuing our grand opening celebration, starting our one and a half inch strip scrap challenge. And we will be seeing some options uh, in what your scraps can kind of become. So um, we'll get you started on that a little bit later. Now, of course, I will try and answer all your questions live. So make sure you post them in the comments. Uh, no matter what the topic is, we will try and get to it. And please, like I said, thumbs hearts, <laughs> no thumbs hearts on YouTube, but uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't ever miss a show and you sign up for notification and then they will let you know. Um, yeah, you can send me hearts this way. Just do lots of this. Okay, <laughs> we need it. This was a stressful start. But of course, thank you for being here. And you want to stay towards the end of the show because we have giveaways every single show we have two winners every single show a live winner and also we post a question in the end now those of you that are used to watch on Facebook we will try and post this video over on Facebook when we're done so hopefully nobody will miss out um, you can always answer that question after we're live if you're watching later the next day the whole week so from our last show, we had a winner. I asked you a question about your favorite side dish because we're going to be stripping on the side. And our winner was Cheryl Curley and her favorite side dish is sweet potatoes. I'm right there with you, uh, Cheryl. I love sweet potatoes as well in all different kinds of forms. So thank you and I eat them every week, every single week, probably multiple times a week. Love them. Um, anyways, Lots went down today, early morning, of course, actually midnight last night, my time. Fall Fellas went live. That is our second project in the Fast and Furious Club. And you are now blowing me away officially. I'm already seeing finished Fall Fellows multiples already. So you've only had this for a day. So if you don't know what Fall Fellows is, that is our October project for the Fast and Furious Club. Cool does she go wall hangings. And so the instructions went live in your account this, uh, er, yeah, this morning, early this morning. And so if you haven't signed up yet and you still want to participate, you can purchase just the one uh, project at a time if you want to. Uh, it comes with a pattern and a video class. And you can also purchase trimesters, which is three projects or the full nine months, because we're going to be having lots of fun with Fast and Furious Club all year long until May. So that is um, fun to see. And I can't wait to see more versions of the Fall Fellas. Uh, it's just really a quick project. I think some of you got it done in just a couple of hours. So uh, depending on what kind of binding you do, that's how fast it is. I promise you that. But of course, let's hope that we're still going. Our screen is saying that nothing is responding. So I am not sure what's going on. Should we maybe check? You're, you're still, uh, I'm, st I'm still live. Okay, that's good to know. Um, 
Well, if we, we are still not live, I am going to keep talking. So are you able to do anything there? It's frozen, but Sharon. Everything is frozen. So we can't play any of our stuff or do any of our photos. That is interesting. Well, maybe we are actually having a snowstorm here in Minnesota. Everybody, it's October 20th, and we have six inches of snow on the ground. Not fun. And let's hope that that is what is causing this, and nobody is ready for this snow. But I don't know. Um, I'm getting texts that we are all good and we are still live on YouTube, but you can't do anything. So we can't play our promo. We can't do anything. So I think we may need to disconnect and, and connect again because everything we have planned for the show, we want to show you lots of photos and play video for you. And so that is not going to be possible if everything is frozen on your end. It's kind of frozen. Yeah. So Mr. Honey Producer is not having a good day. Stressful, stressful day. Yeah. Well, okay. So now what happened? Are we still live? <laughs> <laughs> Something happened. So now I can actually see what's going on. And um, yeah, they're telling me that we're still live. So we should be good. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. And you can still do things? I think I can. I think okay. I'm okay. We think we're back. Okay. That is great. Well, this is going to be one of these shows. Halloween is near. So maybe there's something in the air. Um, I know you want to see what's going to be coming in this book, don't you? So let's check out the little trailer that we put together, that Mr. Honey Producer put together. And this is for the release. And then we're going to get to know a few of the quilts a little bit closer. So let's try this. I'm looking I saw that everybody was good so uh, I am very very excited there's always something when a book is off to the printer which it is now it's in the printer's hands out of mine so the printing process will take about three weeks until um, we actually get our pretty little hands on the pretty little book and so the concept behind this book is pretty much as a sequel to my stripology mixology book so which means that there are 13 quilts in there that all are made with the different pre-cuts. So 10 and five inch squares and then two and a half and one and a half inch strips. What's well, a little twist and difference on these two between the first one is that there is a couple of quilts that use maybe one or two different types of pre-cuts. And that's what we're going to kind of, I'm going to talk you through as we get to know each of the quilts better. So we're, I'm going to show you four quilts today and then we're going to show you, I'm going to show you them kind of throughout the next couple of episodes until we are actually ready to get that book into our hands. So um, the other thing that I have added to this one, well, of course, there's the same concept from last one, being that it is mixology too, there are 13 fresh new cocktail recipes in the book with some gorgeous photos, as you saw, um, that make you just thirsty instantly. 
Now, um, what I've done in the table of contents, I've kind of broken it down by the pre-cut, like each quilt by the pre-cut that it is made with. And so sometimes there's that two in one. So that quilt will show up in two categories there. Now, I also added something that uh, I've been asked about and sometimes a little bit hard for me to determine about my quilt and that is rate them by difficulty. And I say that because all of my quilts are really fairly easy if you have started them. So, but I decided to um, give it a shot. So none of my quilts are harder than intermediate, I would think. So I've broken it down to beginner friendly and that means that you can be pretty much a complete beginner. And then we have the two hatch marks for the confident beginner. And then we have three for the intermediate. And let me just tell you this, don't be intimidated by the three hatch marks because um, that is really the only you know, intricate part about those is maybe that you have to match more seams than some of the others. So that is really it. There might be some points to, to consider, um, but everything else, that's why I did not put any quilts in there that are uh, any marks that they are advanced because none of my quilt patterns are. I feel like. So I hope you agree on that. And so this will be, you can look for this at every single pattern at the top page when they give you the uh, fabric requirements. There are these three little circles and you can see either one, two or three check marks. And so you can kind of rate it by that. So I hope that helps some people. If you're completely new, it's helpful to kind of look for the singles. And then if that was easy, you can easily move on. And of course, if you got the great tools, the stripology rulers, it's a breeze. So what I do in each each uh, pattern as well, I give you, I of course, have illustrations using these tribology rulers, and I give you at the top which ruler is recommended, or sometimes as you can use either or, or both, or whatever. And so I'll give you that, but of course, like all my other books and patterns, I will give you instructions throughout using regular rulers. So if you don't have tribology rulers, you're totally fine. Um, so, Let's start by getting to know a few of the quilts. And I want to start with this for this one first because it is very, very close to my heart. And this one is called Jojo. Now you may have noticed it in the, uh, in the previous little slideshow or the video because it is quite striking. It looks fairly easy and it totally is. This one is made with 10 inch squares. And so uh, very easy, it's great for any kind of large scale prints. You can, you can put anything in there really because there's just cutting out that little square. And of course that is all piece, it's not applique. Um, very easy to do with a Stripology XL or the squared ruler. But how this quilt came to be is actually extra special. So this first, the first quilt I made from, from this pattern or kind of I was de developing the idea was a small quilt just with nine blocks. And let me show you uh, this photo here. So this is the little quilt I made with nine blocks. This came to be on, and this is my grandson. I'm holding my grandson that just turned one this last weekend. And I, so this came to be at four in the morning, day before he was born. Um, I got the phone call that his mom was in labor. So of course I couldn't sleep after that. So I gathered some scraps from the quilt that I had already made for him and started playing because I just could not sit still, could not get wrap my head around anything. So I just started playing with it and I made this little quilt from start to finish. I made the blocks, I sewed them together. Uh, I quilted it between just with my machine, bound it. And so this, I started it probably at like 4.30 in the morning. Uh, it was bound by 7.30 and by 9.30, I was on a plane to Portland to witness his birth or be a part of it. And so of course the quilt, his name is Johan. So the quilt had to be called Jojo. So there we are with the little Jojo that inspired the big Jojo and um, just love this quilt. It's, it's really fun. This is one of those that you will make more than one. I promise you, because I will make more than one. It, like I said, it's a perfect one to show off big prints. It's a perfect one to use with novelty prints, all those directional prints, because you can turn them any which way. And so it's just gonna be a favorite fast quilt to put together, but it still doesn't look all that 
fast. So um, that was Jojo. And so the next one I wanted to show you. Oh, actually, I wanted to show you Jojo up close because I have it here, have her here. And so let's do the overhead camera just to show you a little bit of the quilting and um, some of the fabrics. So I used some of the fabrics from our Paris bundle way back. Um, you might remember when I had that Paris bundle. And so I threw in some of the, I kind of took the prints from the Paris line and then I pulled the colors out of there. So I added more black and more of the coral and more of the kind of turquoisey aqua colors. And of course I love the finished product. And being that it was some of the Paris fabric, I used some Paris fabric on the back. So the back is pieced, um, but a lot of it is, uh, is this big piece of fabric that I had. So I love it and I will definitely be making more. So the next quilt up that we want to get to know a little better tonight is Sammy. So this quilt is made with 10 inch squares and one and a half inch strips. So this is another really fun one that you can make really wild because it's big, you get big pieces that you can show off some great uh, prints. It's easy to do with directional prints um, for those 10 inch squares. And, um, and then for the one and a half inch strips, you can use one fabric, which I just actually pulled a bunch of different pink strips that I had and used that as my accent. But this quilt was originally made for Johan. So soon after, of course, when I found out that I was gonna be a grandma, I um, started contemplating making a quilt. I found the perfect fabric, and which is actually really funny because that fabric line was called Joey and his name ended up being Johan. I thought that was really funny or just karma or whatever it's meant to be. But so here's the quilt that I made for him. And of course, there he is on an Oregon beach last summer. And so I used just different um, yellow strips with that because all of the fabrics in there were kind of in the blue tone. So it was just a really nice contrast. And so this one, I had to name her um, Sammy because her his mom's name is Samantha and so I love being able to use kind of names that can could be both female or male so Sammy it is and so just a little close up uh, for this quilt I just chose all kinds of fun prints that I had so it's a mix of everything but you can probably see the kind of coloration so I chose these lime greens uh, turquoise blues brighter blues and something that would stand out well from all my pink strips and you can see how scrappy they are so they're they don't have to be the same fabric but you can of course use a singular fabric through all of that and create the little waves through the sammy quilt um, love the quilting on it it's very fun just kind of just like this pattern is uh, it was just kind of perfect to photograph it on a beach because that's the kind of vibe that this quilt has to me. So this is Sammy. Like Sammy? I love Sammy too. That's another one that's easy and fast and could be done over and over. Um, now the third one up is actually a quilt that you've seen before. And so I have her hanging behind me. So Octavia is hanging behind me. So this is the qu first quilt I ever showed and you guys even helped me name it because we had a little contest on coming up with a name for it. So this one is made with 10 inch squares and I use a singular background. So we need 10 inch squares of the colored fabric and 10 inch square of the um, background fabric. And then you actually, you know, it looks intricate because you've got some small half square triangles and all these little squares, but you actually are just working with extra large half square triangles. So you cut your half square triangles, you trim them up to a perfect shape, and then you chop them up, turn the pieces around to create the block for the Octavia quilt. So I did put this as a confident beginner uh, just because of the points. So with, but if you follow all of the pressing instructions that I give you, everything will nest for you very nicely. So other layouts are possible because this it actually is a, um, a block that's asymmetrical so you can play with a layout however if you do start playing with a layout the all of your seams will not nest but if you want to play with it I encourage you to do it and, and have fun with it <clears throat> so 
that was Octavia. Octavia. We had a lot of fun photographing her. Uh, just this little wagon was so much fun. So um, we actually do. I used the Naughty and Nice fabric line for this quilt. And we do still have some layer cakes. So I used layer cakes and then just plus some background. And then there's one border. So that could be kind of anything that you use for that. So the net... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I can't really show you up close to Octavia's back there, but um, she's beautifully quilted by Anne Hurlbert. I love um, all the quilting on it, so it's it really complements the shape of the block. All right, so this next uh, fourth quilt that I want to show you tonight is called Spinning Daisies. So this one is made with one and a half inch strips, and it's a really fun block to put together because it's, it's, the block is sewn with a partial seam, which makes it look really hard, but it really is not, and uh, not hard at all. So I used one and a half inch strips from Tula Pink's True Colors, and um, for the pattern, you also need a background and a border, but I decided to do just a scrappy piece border from my scraps, and you can easily do that, or you can just do a single border, you can do double borders, and, and do whatever you want for that. So we did take another picture of spinning daisies, of course, with the prince of the house. Kobe had to check it out. It was, he, it was approved. Um, so he has tested this one very nicely. But I, I love this one. And um, I chose this one for tonight for a reason, which I'm going to tell you a little bit later. But we're going to talk uh, more about, and I'm going to introduce you to all the more quilts in the book. You get to see them up close. But yeah, let's see this one up close. So let me show you. Um, this one is, I just made the crib size. I normally make at least lap size for the quilts in the book, but this one I just made a fun crib size because that's the fabric I had. Um, and so it's really, really cute. Love the quilting on it too by Cars Quilting. Just these fun swirls and flowers. Just makes them spin even kind of spinning effect. Um, take, pl take, take flight. And I had some fun... Uh, puffins that I used partly for the back and uh, some boo-boo blocks for the back but um, that was really fun so this is spinning daisies now the book is right now available for pre-order so both the printed version and the ebook so if you order the printed version what you will get when the book comes in, of course, we will ship to you right away. You will also, you will get it autographed. So you will get it signed by me and you will get a little bonus um, strip of our ruler sticker. So you get a little um, sample strip of our ruler sticker that comes with the shipment. Now the ebook can also be ordered tonight. Uh, however, you can order it and pay for it. However, your book will not be in your account until we have the actual book in stock as well. So we don't want to um, play. This is not the right book. This is <laughs> this tribology. <laughs> um, but I wanted to tell you because we're going to move into our next topic, which is kind of connected, our stripping on the side topic. So what I'm offering for the pre-orders of both the printed book and the ebook is the spinning daisies pattern that I just showed you, you will get that instantly as a PDF download. So if you purchase the either the Mixology book in print or the ebook, you will get that instantly because this one is a perfect pattern to use for our stripping on the side, little one and a half inch strips. So as we move into that, Stripping on the side, I'm going to show you the other options that you can do with our little challenge. And um, this could be one of them. So um, do we have any questions on the book? Let's see if we have any questions. Uh, lots of love. So thank you for all of that. Um, we also decided if the book is not on the website yet, we just wanted to wait a little bit. So uh, the books will be there for pre-sale. So you can just kind of enjoy the show. Don't miss anything. Also, I'm going to show you some fabric to the, towards the end, and we're going to do the same thing we did last week, is we're not going to put it live until um, after the show, so that you can just relax and watch, and then if you want to go shopping afterwards, yeah, there's no stress. All right, <clears throat> so stripping on the side. Are you ready to move on to that? So what this is, um, oh, okay, do we need to order tonight to get the autograph copy? No, no, no. So the book will be available for pre-sale for um, 
for you know until we have it in stock so you can order it whenever i uh, we we just ask that you order it separately because then we can just send that um whenever so otherwise if you order something else with it we won't ship everything until the book comes back in stock the book is same price as the other mixology book even though everything has been going up in price i decided i wanted to have the same price so 27.95 is the price of the book is there a limit on the pre-orders? No, but of course, first orders to come in will get their books first. So I cannot guarantee that I can sign thousands of books in a day and get everything out in a day, but we will do that as fast as we can. So if you, the earlier your order, the sooner you're gonna get it. Um, but as you know, we always try and get our orders out really, really fast. So uh, we will try our best. And my, I gotta start warming up that uh, autograph arm I guess <laughs> all right so any other questions um oh that's great everybody's happy about putting stuff in the store later that's really great um the ebook is the same price yes it's all about the intellectual property so the ebook yes is the same price and the ebook um if you never purchased any of our ebooks it we have two two files that you can use so there is a e e-reader uh, file so if you have any of the e-readers we have a file that uses that or we also have it as pdf so you can read pdfs on any device any computer on your phone so um that should be easy I'm sorry, I will not be signing oh yes yeah, so and mr honey is not going to be signing the book he said um I decided also on you know I questioned we questioned this spiral bound idea a lot um and when I polled everybody about if they would like their book to be spiral bound, it was really split. And it was not even splitting the uh, one way or another. A lot of you wanted it, a lot of you didn't. And actually it was more people that didn't. So um, when I considered everything, because having the book spiral bound, I it is more expensive than uh, the other binding that we used on the other mixology book. So then with the consideration of wanting to have them the same price, that's um, what I went with. So it'll be identical to the Mixology book. It's Oda bound, so it actually uh, stays open uh, quite a bit better, but there's, uh, you can of course have it spiral bound yourself if you prefer that. Um, all right, so any more questions on the book? Are we good on that? Ready to move on to our stripping on the side project. So this one is uh, what I call a leader and ender challenge. So last week I talked to you about just starting to kind of gather your one and a half inch strips. If you don't have any, uh, chop them up and uh, chop up your leftovers. So what you want are strips that are at least like about 10 inches or so, just so that we can make some strip sets. And so gather your strips and um, this is something that can become any size you want depends on how many strips you got but you know we could always add to it um, this can become three uh, actually six different quilt options um, so I'm gonna get you started today or tonight that you can start piecing these and this is how this leader ender works so this is supposed to be something that you just do on the side stripping on the side um, which means that you, if whenever you're piecing anything, any kind of project you're working on, you start your chain piecing and then you're at the, uh, your last piece, instead of ripping that thing, clipping the threads, you take two strips, uh, from your project and you feed, um, we're going to just start by putting two one and a half inch strips together and you feed that through the machine. And then from behind, you can clip your main quilt you're working on. Go press that and then, you know, start piecing again. At the end, you do another strip set, okay? So then you're kind of piecing these strip sets on the side as you're working on other stuff and they just kind of start piling up, right? So that's all we're gonna do to begin with is sew two strips together. But to help you a little bit figure out, okay, where am I going with this? What color strips am I putting together and what am I doing? So here are the six different um, quilts that this whole challenge can become and I will sh give you demonstrations on all six so the first one of course is our rainbow Ruth rainbow Ruth is in my mixology book but if you have been following me for a while this was our scrap challenge in 2018 
So if you didn't make it then, this is of course your option. And I have now put these two files, there were two files that I made for this challenge. I have put them in our free pattern option. So if you go into the G Equal Design store, um, there's a link that says free patterns and that's where you'll find this and it's zero dollars. So you just go through the purchase whole process like you're buying a pattern, but it's you're not gonna pay for it. And then you can download and it's actually gonna be two documents. So two PDFs, one has just the instructions on how to construct the blocks, which you're just making strip sets like I, I started. And then the second one is about the different layouts. But what people didn't know is that Rainbow Ruth had a couple of sisters that you could have done, could have made, um, used the same blocks to make either one of those. And this first one is called Sashing Sue. <laughs> so Sashing Sue, these are my same blocks that ended up in my Rainbow Ruth quilt, but you can just do um, sashing between each block, alternate the two blocks. And so these are just light fabrics that I cut up into, you know, from, of course, scrappy as well. And so that could be um, a layout using some of these same blocks that are used for Rainbow Roof. The other one I called Four Patch Fran. And that involved putting four blocks together, kind of from the same colors, um, and two A blocks and two B blocks, and that creates a four patch. And then they are put together with sashing. So that's another option. And then of course the third, if we can see the Rainbow Ruth again, is the third. So, and that, there she is. I have her up close here just to check her out uh, up close and personal because I did tell you that some of these fabrics were um, kind of unfortunate. And here's my proof. If you really look at them closely, some of them are not all that great, but when they all come together, it's so much fun to see how beautiful uh, your quilt is. So love the quilting on it this quilting was done by Teresa Silva so there's all kinds of things in there and it you know it's funny how when you look up close I mean this is mustaches yeah I don't know why I got that but it's fine it's fine it's all great in here so Rainbow Ruth will be option number one like I said that is your free option too if you just go to free patterns all of the instructions are there so number two I want to talk about um, the two two quilts, quilt options that are in my stripology book. So let's put that stripology, you had that stripology um, image up there, didn't you? Have you lost it now? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, it's one of those nights. So the first stripology book, there are two quilts that are gonna work really well with this challenge. So one is the strip search quilt. So let's put up the photo of um, the mini version. So it, I'm just, this of course can be any size that you, you um, will create, but you can create something as small as just a mini quilt with six blocks. So that's the mini. I just wanna show you the different color versions that I made. I made a runner out of very tropical fabrics and took that on vacation with me to get this photo. And then the third one, very uh, kind of more primitive versions. And that is um, using, I believe, Kansas Troubles fabrics, yes. And I have that, actually, that version right here so we can look at the strip search up close. So strip search is really you throw whatever colors, whatever, you know, amount of each color you want into this quilt and it's just gonna be great. So uh, this is strip search. That would be one option uh, if you have that book. And then from the same book, another quilt from that is strip off. So strip off is, um, I have the runner hanging on, on the cupboard behind me. So this one I use just all orange strips and they're all kind of Halloween fabrics because I wanted them to be more Halloween and they kind of look like pumpkins. Um, but of course they can be multicolored because it, as you can see in the crib size version, I kind of grouped together to make the strip sets uh, fabrics from each color family. So then um, you play with that and you put those those kind of colors together that way. But they could also be really mixed and you can do the same pattern, just mixing up the colors. Um, I have one here, the mini version of the strip off, just so you can see it up close. So this one, you would just make strip sets with five, but we are still always gonna start with two and I'm gonna explain why um, a little bit later. So this is the third option. So moving on to the four, uh, fourth and fifth option, and that, that are two quilts from my Stribology 2 book. 
So Stripology 2 is very same concept as the first Stripology, six quilts using one and a half inch strips. And here are the two quilts that I have chosen for that one. This is Strip Lash. So this one is done just like I said, one, one and a half inch strips. And we're using strip sets. If you have the Stripology XL ruler, we're gonna use the ruler to cut up our half hexagons. If you don't have the ruler, you actually will need a 60 degree ruler to um, make this quilt. But here's the other colorway for the crib version. Of course, that could be really big. I, I always have kind of dreamt of making a super huge strip lash with one and a half inch strips. I think it'd be fabulous. So that's where I just kind of grouped together by color. And so that would be one option. The other option from this book is Strip Ahoy. And I, I really love this pattern. I love this quilt, I always have. So this one we would just need either, um, so we're gonna make a strip set with the multicolors and I, I did just use kind of the blues and the navies and the taupes for those. And what you see light in the picture could be a single fabric <clears throat> or it could be scrappy um, light two and a half inch strips, which I did in this runner. And here is the crib size version. <laughs> hanging off a car. So this one I just use a single fabric for my light and everything else was really wild and fun. So strip ahoy. Um, so let me show you those up close. This is the runner I have here and you can see I just used scrappy light lights for my light and then this is then the strip piecing part. So um, all of these random strips, and then I have the crib size version here if you wanna just see the difference in having multiple colors. So very fun stuff. Um, it's a very it's kind of a striking secondary pattern that this, this pattern creates. Um, so that's our fifth option. And of course, our sixth option would be the spinning daisies pattern from the brand new book. And with that one, I use just wild, colors put no rhyme or reason what goes next to what but of course each flower could be a single color if you want to pair up the colors so that is um our option six so lots of options so now if you already have decided what to do what quilt out of these six you would want to do you can think about this of course but i want to give you some more instructions so we are just going to be piecing together two strips so just making strip sets of two right so what we want to do is just piece them and then of course when you have enough you want to press them and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a pressing demo because when I'm working with strip sets now these are only half width um, so you might have some that are just short so that's okay because we can have them different widths and, and it all depends on what we can get out of it but these are just half width. I actually, when I'm working with one and a half inch strips, I like to cut them on the fold so they're only half width. Um, it's just easier to work with, easier to press and everything. So, but when we are pressing these, <coughs> you wanna take your iron and so lay your strip kind of straight. I always give it a little tug so I know it's laying straight. <clears throat> and then I start by going over that seam with the iron so that is kind of setting our seam flattening those threads so they're going to fold over easily so then what you want to do i'm going to flip this over because i already pressed it so then what you want to do is open this up keeping it straight and then you want to use your fingers to push the seam out and then just follow gently with the iron as you push push that seam out follow gently with the iron, do not use the iron to push it out because then your strip um, sets start doing a little bit of wave. But this way, it's the best way to get a really nice straight strip set and you're really opening up that seam, making sure there's no creases in here. So that's what you wanna do with your strip sets. But if you've already decided one of those six patterns, let me give you a little extra instruction so that you can kind of make a more informed decision and get the look that you are wanting. So let's start with, um, <clears throat> if let's start with rainbow. So if you're making rainbow Ruth or strip off or strip lash, strip lash is the hexagon one, strip off is the, is the circles, um, this one. And you want the look of kind of grouping together the colors or rainbow Ruth where you need to make kind of grouped colors together. 
So then you want to make sure that you all, those two that you sew together, you want to make sure that they're kind of the same color, not the same fabric, but the same color. Okay. So kind of what I did here. And, um, so that's just for those three. Now you can still make strip off without doing that. Remember you can make these very wild, so it's not necessary for strip off. All right. So that's kind of the only no uh, thing to think about if you want the same look as you've been seeing. All right. So, um, if you're making strip off because we're just going to start by doing twos, right? And this is going to be fives. You want to not piece all of your strips into pairs. Okay. So you want to li leave a single strip extra for every two strip sets. Okay. So you make the two and then take one single strip and leave it on the side extra because we're going to have to join that so we can have five. So that's for strip off. And then also if you're making strip search, because uh, we're making two different strip sets there, you want to leave a single extra strip for every five of these. So if we have five pairs sewn together, grab a single strip and set that aside. All right. For our next, um, our next instruction. <clears throat> then also for uh, rainbow Ruth, we're going to leave two single strips for every three strip sets. So I'm going to post all of this on the blog. So as you know, whenever I do any kind of sew along, we have all the resources gathered in one place on the blog. So we already have a post up about this stripping on the side with all the links to everything. And so now we will add probably not until tomorrow. We will have a second post, which will add all this information and all the things that you need to consider depending on what pattern you want to work with. <clears throat> all right. So just the two don't get ahead. Well, if you do, it's okay. You know, I encourage rebel behavior, but if you want to do it along with us and along with me, just do the twos and who knows, maybe you'll have a lot. Maybe you'll just have a few and that's okay. So next week I will take you through kind of the next steps of, um, of some of these. So make completing our strip sets and maybe starting to subcut some of them, depending on what we're making. All right. <clears throat> so, um, one of the things that I know some people were concerned about because all of you maybe watched that watch last week, saw our extra special, our grand opening special of the honey buns, which are the one and a half inch rolls for an extra special price, only 1995 with are normally about $30. Um, we actually, we cleared out really fast, but we have added a load. Um, luckily Moda was so uh, kind to, to offer us more for that special price because of our grand opening. So we have more coming. They're coming in tomorrow and we already have them up on the website. So we have some more of the, of the ones that we had before, but then some new ones. So check it out on the website. If you want to check, uh, you know, grab some more strips and you can always add to what you got or, um, do whatever, or just snatch something up for a really good price to work on later. It's going to be a long winter, just saying, <laughs> but if you are using those and you're concerned with the accuracy, because most, most of you probably have cut your own while uh, using your stripology rulers. But if you're going to be working with the honey buns, don't worry about it. I'm going to talk about that more next week because we're going to trim everything. So you can still use those honey buns. You don't have to trim them beforehand. You, uh, just piece them together and use that outer pinked edge as a guide for your foot. And then we will trim the sides because neither of these patterns are very, uh, dependent on them being actual size, actual strip size. So we can always trim. So don't worry about that. Strip search is in uh, stripology, the first stripology book, the white, uh, it's kind of the white book and all the little quilts are in the middle. <clears throat> so, um, all right. So that any other questions before, before we, uh, move on. All right. Lots of, uh, trying to decide. So length does not matter. No, Karen is asking. No, it really, it really doesn't. Um, so because this is a scrap challenge, it can be any size. I mean, you can make a mini quilt, like I said, just 
make a small mini or you can make a table runner. Maybe you'll have enough for a table runner. Maybe you'll have enough for a crib size or bigger. So it just depends on what you got, how long you want to take it. But I'm going to take, I'm going to give you instruction throughout the next few weeks. Uh, but this is a project that could take longer. So even though I'm taking you through the next steps, don't worry. If you have more strips, just keep her going. Um, it's all great. <clears throat> Last week, you spoke about starching fabric and waiting until the starch was totally dry. Um, can you explain why? Um, yes, because so, when you wet fabric with starch, it's just like wetting fabric with with uh, water. If you start ironing it, you know, right away, it will, you know, maybe stretch a little bit. And so it's, it's I, I don't necessarily wait till it's completely dry. But I got this question, especially about do you start between like after you piece and do you start again? I never do that. So you want to start your fabric. So do your best press or magic sizing before you cut your fabrics. So spray it, let it dry a little bit, iron it really well. And I use steam when I iron it and then you cut your fabric. And then I don't use that starch again because the fabric already has it in it and it's all good. So you don't have to do it through every time you, um, you press throughout the whole quilting process all right <clears throat> can you show strip search again where was to, oh she's right here that's the one i have i obviously gave my runner away super cute so i'm kind of bummed but this is strip search um the crib size that i did with the kansas troubles fabric all right should uh yeah the length of the strips so they, like I said, they could be anywhere. I would say maybe give them all about 10 inches so that you can maybe get one or two strip things out of it. Now, of course, you can, uh, it's just more work the shorter the strips, but use it up, use it up. Where do we find the free patterns? So the free patterns on the website, like you're going shopping, go to shop and on the way bottom, there's a link that says free patterns. There's a few patterns there. Um, so you go through the process just like you put it in your cart, even though it's zero dollars, you go through the whole checkout. You won't pay because it's zero. And, um, but it's, it's just nice. Then it be, will stay in your account just along with any other PDF that you purchase, they will stay in your account. And so whenever you log into your account on GE Quilt Designs, it'll be there. <clears throat> Patty says, do you spray starch the pre-cuts? So no, I don't spray starch everything. So I only only give a little bit of best press or uh, magic sizing when I know I'm going to be cutting things on the diagonal on a bias so sometimes I do that with with the uh, with 10 inch squares rarely with five inch squares sometimes it depends on the pattern and I actually did include that in my book so whenever those patterns that I actually did it myself I put that note in the pattern that this may be a good idea if you would like to do that either I say with just your background fabric or um, your other fabric. So uh, I did put it in there. <clears throat> Trying to give you all the more information to get started. Um, Sean is asking what was the fabric line for Octavia? That was uh, naughty and nice, naughty or nice. And we still have those uh, layer cakes in this in the store. Uh, will you show the block choices in photos? Um, on the block. I think that was the question. I lost it. <laughs> Scroll by too fast. And I will, I will, we will show you and break it all down for you. We will show you the six options and, um, talk about the considerations by each option. So what can I do to stop fraying of the material? So, you know, any, anytime you handle, handle fabric too much, it's going to start fraying more. So starching, of course, um, helps that a little bit. It will still fray even though you starch it or best press it. So, uh, of course, it's it, it's a combination of the weave of the fabric. Sometimes if we use a looser weave, which is usually like the, um, the cheaper fabrics, they fray more easily. Um, thinner fabrics sometimes fray more. So it depends on if it was made in Japan or uh, Korea or China or whatever. Um, it's, it's just a different weave. And then I just suggest we, you try not to handle things. So after I cut my fabric, I take it straight to my sewing machine. And I'm not kind of, it's not kind of rolling around in a bag or anything like that, where that fraying process starts. But there's something we can never totally get rid of fraying it. Um, if you cut your fabric pretty straight on the grain, uh, it really shouldn't be that much of an issue. Once we quilt it, it's all tight in there. So it's not going to really affect it much. Of course, um, kind of, you know, uh, 
thread or uh, woven fabrics, some, some of them, some of them, the yarn dyes, they will fray lots more than, than printed fabric. So it's just something we have to deal with. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> How do we go to the blog? So it's on the website, geequiltoscience.com. There's the shop link. And then there, if you scroll, you know, go to more, there's a blog and you'll find it there. All right. Um, that's great. A lot of, a lot of good, good information and questions, but I have some fabric to show you before we kick out today. And so I have, we have new stuff, actually some pre-orders that came in. We have the cave. Let me, the one of them fell down, so I'm going to grab it. So just go to the overhead camera so that I can show these. Um, we have both the warm and the cool came in and it's cut and ready. So these are the cave collective for 2020. We have, I put together a warm bundle and a cool bundle. So those of you that had pre-ordered this and not gotten yours yet, your orders went out today. So that'll be coming your way. So we have more now in the store in stock. And then another pre-order came in and that is Balboa by Sharon Chelsea for Moda. Beautiful line. I kind of came up with this color combination with a with the browns and the greens and the turquoise and then just this pop of, um, I don't even know what to call it, kind of violet, beautiful color. Um, and so this one, I didn't include any light, so it's a perfect one to use and you can add your lights or your darkest value as accents, as background. So Bubble is now in stock and uh, ready. And also if you pre-ordered this, this also went out today. And then we have three new ones. And this one is uh, just a gorgeous one. I know some of you have just really love fabric from Lewis and Irene, and I do. I'm, I'm a big fan of Lewis and Irene fabrics. And this one is actually glow in the dark. It's called Nighttime in Bluebell Woods. Very whimsical, uh, beautiful fabric, uh, fabric colors. So lots of these purple hues, but so really kind of woodsy prints. And we have this colorway, which is kind of like the night colorway. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, all these white, all the white in it is glow in the dark. So we have these and then we have it in the more purple. So deep purple, it's just beautiful color. I love this, the trees with the stars and then just kind of deer hiding. So directional. And then we have this in the more purple is the same prints here and fireflies and then we have the green so we have the owls and the green and the trees into the more taupey color so this one is beautiful um and then the then we end go into those blues so this is a 15 piece line like all of the uh, lewis and irene lines Nighttime in Bluebell Woods is the name of this one. Just really pretty. And of course, the bonus is it's glow in the dark. I wish we could turn off the lights. <laughs> that would be cool. So we could see it. But it's really cool. I've sewn with um, some of their their glow in the dark fabrics before. And it's really cool. I wasn't really expecting it to really glow, but it did. It was so cool. All right, so another brand new one that came in is called Silverstone by Kaufman. So this one has a little glam in it. It has silver and gold. So it's a, a monochromatic line, but oh, I love this print. Just love this print. So kind of a classy combination, but I just love the little metallic. And it's so kind of trendy right now in home deck to have the gold accents but this one has the silver too. So it, it will have kind of combined the two. Just beautiful mix of um, these florals and then just textures and into the grays. So these will be really awesome for table runners and, or just a really cool classy quilt. Um, and then this last one, this, this one here. So there's 12 pieces in Silverstone. Um, in this one, we've been waiting for a long time. This one was supposed to arrive a lot sooner, so we don't have a lot. I apologize ahead of time for that. And then another one that we ordered a while back and um, very unique, but very cool. I love this line and I love this um, 
fabric company Figo. It's a version of Northcott, but kind of always more, uh, I would say, modern, cooler vibes. Look at these sand dollars. So this is C Botanica. And so ocean themed, but in with like a twist. I just, um, the designer is Sarah Gordon. And I just love this artwork. Check this out. It's just so gorgeous. Look at these seahorses and the, um, what is this called again? I, I can't think, of course. You guys you guys know me when I'm live. Um, urchin. Sea urchin? Yeah, yeah. Well, you should help me out there, mister. Huh? Sorry. Um, love the shells. So the shells are both in the pink and then in the blue. And then we have the coral uh, going into these blacks. I just love this. Corals and uh, some more blacks, some of these little small sand dollar patterns. And then um, a little bit more of this color ties in with everything. And then the blues. So the coral and the blues, greens, and the sand dollars. So this is C Botanica. Just unique colors, different type of stuff, stuff that you don't see. And that's so up my alley. I like to do something different all the time, as you probably know by now. <clears throat> so do we have our live winner ready to roll, Mr. Producer? Jan Comfort. Congratulations, Jan. You have won a $25 gift card. So please contact us. If you see this, my email is gudrun at geequiltdesigns.com. Uh, we will try and get a hold of you. If you have purchased from our store before, we can sometimes find you. But please, if you're seeing this, contact us and we will, um, <clears throat> we will get that $25 gift card to you right away. But there is a second chance to win. Of course, um, this is for a, another $25 gift card. So I am going to ask you a question. All you have to do is answer the question in the comments. And um, then, of course, we will draw a random name from those comments next week. And uh, so my question, I know this has been a while, uh, but I think another idea is we're going to play that trailer again with all the quilts from the video. But my question is, what quilt caught your eye first from the new book? I know they, they are 13 of them, so you have to pick one. That's hard, but maybe you don't remember. So I think instead of playing our normal uh, outro, we think we should play this again. Don't you think? <clears throat> now, of course, I want to thank you so much for being here in, despite our challenges and we're not li being live on Facebook. But uh, what you can do to help us out, of course, is share the love, share the video. Um, and I know this is not, not the same on YouTube, but we are going to share this in Facebook and then we, you can share the love there. So, of course, the more, the sh more you share, the more videos we can do for you. So we will be live on Friday. Hopefully, Facebook will let us be live on Friday. And we'll be live on YouTube as well. So 3 p.m. Central Time. Just make sure if you're here from Facebook, you usually watch on Facebook. Subscribe to that YouTube channel and make sure you're... Uh, you can pop over there if we have issues. But that is our Friday show, and I will be there with some cocktails and um, some fun stuff. I want to show uh, show you some stuff that I experienced this weekend visiting my grandson. And then, of course, the following Tuesday, 7 p.m. Tuesday. That is October 27th. And so then we will continue on with our stripping on the side. Make sure you check out the blog until then. But that is all for me tonight. Me and Honey Producer, uh, I think we need a drink after this one. <laughs> he especially. He especially. He uh, is the savior of the day all the time. So, uh, But let's just play the video again, the trailer for the brand new book, Stripology Mixology. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you next time.